So what we want to touch on next is different products that Guardian offers. So the core products they offer, they've got a lot of products. <laughs> the main products they offer at, are as follows. You've got their L99, L95, and L121. Then they also have their 10Pay, 20Pay, L65. Then their Executive Strategies product, which actually has a minimum base premium of $100,000. However, that is really a high early cash value product. It's comparable to Mass Mutual's high early cash value product, but it's designed, you can kind of see it in the name, for executives and individuals with very, very high net worths. You will see typically about 95% of the base premium show up in cash value in the first year. And then PUAs are in addition to that. So that product is very, very attractive for corporations, premium financing cases, individuals that want to see their cash value up front. We've got a lot of people when I work with, when our company works with individuals that are considering seven figure payments, a lot of times they'll look at that and they say, hey, I get the short term and long term performance, but how I view this product is really as a savings alternative. I do not want to give up cash in the beginning. How I built my business is really with cash. If I have to give up a huge hit right off the bat, I view that as a lost opportunity cost, whereas this product does not do that. Now, the drawback to that is that it's somewhat exclusive to people with a lot of money. With that said, their L95 product, that's one of my personal favorites with Guardian, where I'll refer to it as a hybrid product, where I get strong early cash values, the company only overcharges me for the base premium in the first year, and if I'm funding the policy for something like five to 10 years, a short funding period, and then I'm shutting the funding down or paying just the base premium, I don't give up much long-term performance with that option. So it's a really a nice all-in-one product where I can keep funding or stopping short, and I have a strong early break-even point, strong long-term cash values. That's actually the model we used, or the model was based off that L95 when we went through that loan option. So we've got the different options here. A lot of products that they have available. With respect to their design, so here's a nice advantage to Guardian. All companies have different design limitations. Specifically, what I mean when I say that is when I pay any amount of money into a policy, where can it go? I can direct it toward the base premium or toward the PUA rider. What happens with premium dollars right off the bat with respect to your cash value? Typically, premium dollars do not show up in cash value in the first year with an L95, for example, with an L129 or L121. It's the first and second year. You give the one back to the 10 pay. With the base premium, guardian specific limitations. If I have a $10,000 base premium, guardian as a company will allow you to pay 10 times that base premium in PUAs. That would be $100,000. If and only if a term rider is attached to the policy, specifically their one year term insurance rider. So their PUA limitations are as follows. You can pay 10X the base premium with a one year term rider. And then if that one year term rider A is not attached or B falls off or naturally expires at some point in time, then the maximum PUA payment you can make is 3X the base, base premium. So what that would mean in this particular case is if you said, hey, right now I can pay a maximum of $110,000 to the 10K base premium plus another 100,000 in PUAs. So for a total of 110, once that term rider, if I cut it after year seven, or it naturally expires, because how that term rider works is as you pump money into the policy, your cash value increases, but your whole life death benefit goes up and your term rider comes down. And eventually it expires where you just have a pure whole life insurance policy. So once that happens in this particular case, your PUAs would be limited to $30,000 per year. Which we'll pull up an illustration in a little bit on that point as well. So main thing with the design limits is when you've got the one year term attached, you can 10X the base premium, which is fantastic. When it's not attached, your maximum is 3X. 
let's continue on. Next, we will touch on one of my favorite features with Guardian, the paid up editions rider. Very, very flexible. Specifically, what I mean when I say very, very flexible is you can make payments at leisure. What you can do is you can go on your computer, right onto your online portal and just pop money right into PUAs. You can send in a check. You can do it over the phone via wire if you want to. You could even use your mobile app. Guardian has invested a ton into technology, especially since 2008, I've noticed this, just as I look at their history. But a big advantage they have, payments with respect to unscheduled PUAs can be made whenever you want. Scheduled PUA rider. So in order to have the flexibility to just dump money into PUAs anytime you want, Guardian does have a minimum scheduled PUA requirement. And that is $250 per year or the cost of the one-year term rider if you have a one-year term rider attached. Now, what I want to touch on here is that minimum $250, it is a PUA rider. So what that means is it's not just a pure cost that goes out the door. It is a PUA rider where there is a fee. There's always a fee with PUA riders that goes to the insurance company, but the bulk of it goes to cash value and then begins to compound the guaranteed rate, dividends, and gets better and better as the years pass. And then unscheduled PUAs, oh yeah. All right. Now, here's a neat feature that they offer, and this was actually a result of the product's that were updated with the 7702 change, is in the first year, Guardian will actually allow you to exceed that 10X limitation. They do have limits, but they're quite large. They will allow a maximum payment of $10 million up front or 50 times the base premium. What I definitely wanna make sure I make very, very clear is that is only for the first year. After that, you can't do it. They won't allow you to illustrate it, but in the first year, they will. So where we see that is one, if someone has a lump sum, if someone said, hey, I wanna pay in $100,000 per year, but can I start off with 200K and still have a $10,000 base premium with that 1090 split where I can 10X the base, all of that good stuff? And the answer is yes, with their new limitations, which gives Guardian a, a nice advantage there. So if you have a large lump sum, specifically use that example, you said, hey, I wanna be able to pay in $100,000 per year, but I do have a sum of money. I came into a, an inheritance, I sold a piece of property, I've got 200 grand that I'd like to start off, get it into the policy, I don't wanna have to wait, can I get it in without hurting my performance? Because often it makes sense to spread a lump sum payment out. In some circumstances, that can make sense. Now, age will play a role in that too. That is something that our team, I personally would want to look at to make sure when we're adding a lump sum in, if it makes sense to spread it out, I'm going to let you know it makes sense to spread it out so you don't hurt the cash value performance at all. But there are cases it definitely does make sense. But it's limited to the first year only if I have a lump sum of money. Where it can also make sense is with estate planning cases where it's a single premium mech. This is very common where people will say, hey, I just want to mech out a policy. This is an asset on my balance sheet. I'm just going to let it grow over time. The death benefit still paid out income tax-free, similar to a Boley product. It's not a Boley product, but it's similar just with how it would function in that particular case. So first year, I can pay up to 10 million or 50 times the base premium, the lesser of those two. And then after that, their limits are 10x, 10x the base premium or a maximum of 500,000 per year. Very, very important here, that 10x ratio is if that one year term rider is attached. If it's not, then it would be 3x the base premium or $500,000 per year in PUAs. What that means is if you have a $1 million base premium, you can't pay 10x that base premium in PUAs. The most you could pay would be a $500,000 PUA payment. Um, we have gotten some exceptions on that in the past, but they have to be justified and it's got to be you know, very, very clear up front that client's intentional as far as what they're trying to do with the policy. Usually that's with larger seven-figure payments. 
So policy design here, how we would set up a policy is if you said, hey, I'm interested in a policy with Guardian, what should the design specifically look like? Here you go. If I had a base premium of $10,000, scheduled PUA, $250. We'll assume you have a one-year term rider attached here, another $750. That means you're committed to what? $11,000. So you can literally commit to 11 k per year. That's what you're billed for each year, annual bill. You could also pay that monthly if you wanted to. And then 100% at your discretion, you could throw another $100,000 into PUAs. 100,000, 10xing your base premium. Want to see an example on that? Ah, before we look at the example, the other thing I would do here is if your maximum desired payment, in this case, would be $110,000. Tell my math is a little off because this would actually be 99. I didn't factor in the scheduled PUA and the term rider, but you know what I mean. Set that MEC limit at $110,000. Remember that the MEC limit has a direct relationship to an individual's age and total amount of life insurance on the policy. So let's look at an example here. I'm going to assume for this one that you just want to pay a total of $100,000. That's the net maximum amount. So as we look at an example here, here we go. Anytime we look at a life insurance illustration, if I am you, 40-year-old male here, if I'm you, this 40-year-old individual, my question would be this, with the knowledge I have being in the industry, where is my money going? So if you're very, very intentional stating, I want a maximum cash value policy, how do I know what to look for? How do I know if it's really set up for maximum cash value? Or if someone's trying to push that base premium a bit higher to get a little bit higher commission, playing any games or anything like that? No, 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 be upfront. Where's your money going? Money can go where? toward the premium or toward the PUA, the paid up additions rider. Look at this. So this guy, the premium piece right here, $9,090.92. Where did I come up with that number? <laughs> You'll see in a second. That purchases you a whole life death benefit of about $462,000. At age 40 for a male, if we stop there, that would get him almost a $20,000 MEC limit. Now in this example, he wants the ability to pay in $100,000 per year. So that's not gonna fly. So what we did here, in order to raise the MEC limit, how do we do that? We need to push the death benefit up. You can probably see this down here, it's just over $2 million. How can we push that death benefit up? Two ways you can do it. One, you can increase the base premium but remember that that does not show up in cash value in the first year. So it hurts, people don't like that. It inflicts financial pain. The other way you can raise the death benefit, so this guy, target additional benefit, almost $1.6 million. What this guy is, is a term insurance rider. And really what this is, is a cheap, if you don't like the word cheap, refer to it as a cost-effective method to raise the death benefit, which mainly raises the MEC limit. The cost for the term rider is about 500 bucks per year. And it does actually, in this example, go down each year. So where is the money going? Our true minimum would be the $9,000 base premium plus the cost of the term rider. If we just want to round up, call it $10,000 per year. That's our true minimum commitment. All of the additional funds we've got going toward a PUA rider, this reads scheduled. Most we work with, including myself, because I do have guardian policies, set it up to be an unscheduled payment, meaning I add it when I want to add it. Simple as that. Now, as we scroll down here, here we go. What do we notice? There's the payment, 100K per year for five years. There's your base premium. What's happening here? Year six and seven, you see that base premium still do? You're not paying it though. If you look at your net premium column, or the one to the right of it, net after tax outlay, this represents your actual out-of-pocket in this illustration. 100,000 per year for five years, 
and nothing thereafter. So what's happening here, these zeros all the way down in year six and seven, the dividends on the policy are first covering the base premium and then everything else are being kicked, is being kicked back into cash value. So this is your money column. First year, net cash value, just about 84%. The first year cash value with most Guardian products and with just about any company should typically range between 80 and 90%. Before the industry changed the 7702 rules, I would always say between 85 and 90%. What's happened here, if you want to be specific to Guardian, is they've increased their PUA fees, which we've got videos that go through a full breakdown on that. Those are not public, those we have for our clients. To simplify, they, to, they increased their PUA fee from 5 to 10%. That's a gross fee, as you'll notice the numbers will never come out to a clean 5 or 10%. But what it does is really push that break even back, got about 84% right off the bat. But this is really just an example to demonstrate how I can have the ability to pay up to 100 k per year and commit to a small amount here. In this case, about $10,000. Fun stuff, right? A lot of information, but hopefully this has been helpful thus far. Going through what you can accomplish with a Guardian policy if you are interested in them. And if you've worked with us or you're working with us, you already know this. <laughs> All right. So one other feature Guardian has, this is very, very valuable, is their indexed participation feature. So what this index participation feature really allows is for you to experience the potential of greater returns, call it, on your cash value. So it enhances the earning potential of a whole life insurance policy. So what it allows you to do is instead of receiving just the basic dividend rate, is have your money tied to the S&P 500 index. I'll refer to it as a dividend alternative. A couple bullet points here with this. Cap rate. Current cap rate is 11%. The lowest that cap rate can be, as the company reserves this, is 8%. What the cap rate is, is if I have an 11% cap rate on my policy and the S&P 500 shoots up, say it does 30%, I will be capped out at a maximum earning rate of 11% for the year. So the cap rate caps the maximum you can earn each year. The guaranteed floor, this is interesting how Guardian did this with their product, is what's Guardian's guaranteed rate for the majority of their products? 3%. The guaranteed rate when you exercise the index rider is 4%, which at first is like, really, sign me up. However, there's always a catch. Anytime I exercise that index rider, there is a 2% charge, which effectively does what? Brings the guaranteed rate down to 2%. So one nice thing about the indexed feature <laughs> with consistency is if you have a old Guardian product and you have this rider attached or a new, a new Guardian product, anytime you turn the indexed rider on, on the portion of your cash value that is tied to the index, you'll always have a net guaranteed rate, a net guaranteed rate of 2%. All right. So kind of on that point, a charge is assessed only when the rider is exercised. So what that means is you can actually choose when you turn that rider on and when you don't turn it on. So I can take out a policy with just the basic dividend crediting rate. So I'm receiving just the dividend. I set my index allocation at 0%. If I leave it at that forever, there's no charge. So if I don't use the index rider, I'm not being charged for it. If I decide to turn the index rider on, at that point in time, the 2% charge comes in. Now we have here, charge assessed only when the rider is exercised. Another piece I should add in there is on how much cash value I decide to link to the rider. I can decide to allocate a percentage of my cash value to the index rider and leave a percentage to, the, to receive the basic dividend rate. So specifically, what I mean when I say that is if you've got $100,000 in cash value, if you've got 100% of your cash value 
tied to the basic dividend rate, there's no 2% charge. If you decide, hey, the market just tanked, I don't want to receive the dividend at all, I'd like to go 100% index strategy, 100% of your cash value will be tied to the S&P 500 index strategy, and a 2% charge will be assessed to 100% of your cash value. Now, if you elected to do something like this, tie 50% of your cash value to the dividend and 50% to the index, guess what would happen? 50% of your cash value, $50,000 in this case, would be assessed with that 2% charge. Now, the fun part about this is you can actually switch back and forth each year between the dividend and index option. You can switch on your policy anniversary date. It actually has to do with, it's about 30 days before your anniversary date is when you can actually make that adjustment. It's not on the anniversary date, um, but you can switch it each year. That's the main thing I wanna mention. And we've got one opportunity to do that. We cannot just kind of switch it at random. Hey, the market just tanked, let me turn it on. I wish we could do that. Um, unfortunately, we cannot. But it is a good option to be aware of. One other thing I do wanna add is if you have a one-year term rider attached, I almost forgot about this. That index rider, we can attach it, but we cannot actually turn it on until after the first three years. So in the fourth year, beginning of the fourth policy year, is when I can start to experience the benefits of that rider. So even if you have it on at 100%, years one through three, and you'll see this too if I look at an illustration, the basic dividend illustration compared to the index rider being uh, exercised, they'll be identical. The cash values years one through three, beginning year four, the indexed rider illustration will start to pull ahead. So how these work, just to kind of break this down a little bit, dividend, let's assume current rate 5.65%. How that works, you have a 3% guaranteed rate, which means you have a surplus of what? 2.65% which gives you a total dividend interest rate of what we wrote up top, 5.65%. If you elect to go with the index feature, let's assume just at 100% in this example, what would happen, the guaranteed rate would be bump, bumped up to 4%. But remember, there's a 2% charge which really brings that guaranteed rate down to, to 2%, so you minus that out. Let's, a, let's suppose that the S&P 500 has a killer year and does 30%, but your cap rate is 11%. What would happen there? You would earn up to the cap rate, 11%. However, subtract the charge of 2%, which would give you an effective dividend crediting rate of 9%, which is nice. Now, also to be completely transparent, as we always strive to do, <laughs> because it's important, that's still a gross rate that is credited after the company's insurance expenses. I might see the actual internal rate of return, the net growth rate, fall between seven and a half and 8% in this example. So I, I hate like nickel and diming with the fees and insurance expenses, but they're there. That's why I'm such a big fan of the internal rate of return, which we will look at very, very soon. So we look at that next. Yeah, we're just about done. No, this is a lot. If you found this one informative, please let me know. There we go. So what I wanna wrap up with here before I touch on the actual performance at the end is the sweet spot. So I am a firm, firm believer that all insurance companies have pros and cons, different advantages. Our company primarily uses Mass Mutual and Guardian. Those are my two favorite companies. Any of the four major mutual companies, Mass Guardian, New York Life, and Northwestern Mutual, they've consistently delivered. Like when I do the studies, the historical data, we have proof of performance. Why I like Mass Mutual and Guardian is when you look at them from a flexibility standpoint, you, the policyholder, can adjust your payments over time. So what a lot of people like is having the ability to pay up to $100,000 per year, but only be billed for $10,000 per year. Or having the ability to pay up to 10K per year, 
but only being billed for $1,000 per year. Nice advantage when I take a whole life insurance policy, core benefits, safe, liquid, tax-free, but now I blend in flexibility. I'm not committed to this huge bill. A lot of people have expressed appreciation for that. Hey, life happened for the worse. I could easily scale back and add more discretion. People like that kind of stuff, myself included. So their sweet spot, flexibility, very convenient for fluctuating income. So your income bounces up and down. Maybe you're a business owner in a, in a sales role, whatever it might be. You have uncertainty around what your income will be, or maybe you, you're pretty certain as far as what it will be, but you're uncertain as far as when you'll receive it. It always comes at different times. That's a nice advantage to Guardian and where they can accommodate quite nicely. Online portal, mobile app, premium PUAs, loans can be taken and repaid, everything through the online portal, which is really nice. Mech tracking. I'm a huge fan of this. Guardian does allow PUA catch-up payments. So if you haven't seen any of our mech catch-up videos, I would recommend those for this topic. But basically, if I have a policy where I can pay up to $100,000 per year and say I only pay in 50K for the first year, second year, third year. So that's a policy where I could pay 100K per year. By the third year, I could pay in how much total? I could have paid in 300K. But we'll assume over three years that you paid in 50K per year, which would be what? By year three, $150,000. So what this means is you could have paid in another $150,000, but you did not for whatever reason. Guardian is a company, if a one-year term insurance rider is attached, that is critical to be able to do this, you can make a big catch-up payment exceeding the 10x limitation they enforce, which would be, what, another $150,000. And you can do that literally by just logging onto the online portal and throwing it in there. So that means, call it by year three, I've paid them the total of 150, I sell a piece of property, I get a big bonus, I sell something, I get a big commission, I say, hey, I've got another $150,000. I set my policy up with a $100,000 annual MEC limit. That is a rolling MEC limit. So again, what that means, is in year three, because I have that unused mech space, I can just throw it in there. Their systems track that, and you'll see that on your online portal, you'll see it when you go to make a payment, and then also we, your agent, or whoever your agent is, has that as well, which is a really nice feature. Now, their sweet spot, best suited with max funding for five to 10 years. That really has to do with how you can design a policy with that one-year term rider to fund right up to the MEC limit. If you want to max fund a Guardian policy for 20 or 30 years, typically you can't do it. You can, but the design will alter quite a bit. If I'm funding 10 years or less, I can easily, easily achieve a 1090 split, meaning I have a 10% base premium and shovel everything else into PUAs accelerating the cash value growth. If you said, hey, I really like Guardian because of the flexibility, but I wanna be able to pay into this policy for 30, 40, or 50 years, some people like to do that, the 1090 split, eh, it's gonna to be tough because that one year term rider typically cannot last that long. What you'd have to pivot to is a 25-75 split. And that's where most we work with will consider Guardian, look at other companies as well, but seeing options there is so, so important to prevent that situation of, oh, well, I didn't know companies A, B, or C offered an alternative that I would have been interested in. So we gotta provide that up front. So let's look at this. We're gonna to touch on the strong guaranteed cash values as well. So this option we had up before. So here's the same policy across the board. What do you notice? Guaranteed values at 3%. Dividend rate at 5.65%. Then the indexed feature. We've got the exact same policy here, side by side with different crediting assumptions. So 100K for five years, there's your guaranteed values, breaking even, really between years eight and nine, which is not bad. 
pre-7702 update, if you've got a product with a guaranteed rate of 4% and you set it up in a manner where you only paid into it for five years, you'd frequently see that guaranteed break-even point between years five and six. That was specific to Guardian. Dividend values based on the company's current dividend rate, breaking even year five. And then the indexed feature values between years four and five. One thing I want to touch on before we wrap up with this, and this again is kind of a blanket statement with all companies, is many people are attracted to these dividend interest rates, 5.65% in this example. I'm not earning at any point in time 5.65% on my money. And how you can see that is one, we put it right here, the annual IRR, which stands for internal rate of return, that shows the net growth rate year over year, and then the average internal rate of return. How much did I average out over a 10, 20, or 30 year period? So as I look at this guy, 100K per year for five years, very nice. Annual IRR, what do I notice there? What's the worst year about any whole life insurance policy? No matter how well it's designed, first year. Paid in 100 grand, what does not show up in cash value is the base premium, the term rider, and also the PUA fee. That's why I've got a negative 16% hit, and we maximize the cash value there. Year two, I pay in $100,000. I see it grow from 83 and change to 182 and change. I paid in 100, yet the growth was about $99,000. I love to isolate these points. That means the negative, the growth that year was negative 0.79. That's not attractive from a cash value standpoint. Next year, I pay in $100,000. Grows from 182 to 283. That means I've got the 100 back, plus a little bit more than 1,000 on top of it. The internal rate of return, the net growth rate, 0.57%. Dividend rate there was 5.65%. This, is my actual growth rate. If you are questioning, should I go with a whole life insurance policy, or someone else is questioning it, your CPA, a financial advisor, whoever it might be, this is what they're going to isolate, <laughs> the internal rate of return. If you're interested in it, which a lot of people are, corporations use this and such, why they don't do it, or the drawback would be this right here. How I view it is if I am okay with that first year hit, meaning I say, okay, the policy is going to net out somewhere between three to 5%, regardless of what these projections show, that's likely what it's going to do, three to 5% net internal rate of return, that is tax-free, it'll occur regardless of the market and the economy doing very, very well, or very, very poorly, that's what it will do. Got that nice borrowing feature, all of that good stuff, but what's the drawback? Right here, up front. If that doesn't work for me, doesn't work for me, and that's okay. But it is so much better to be aware of that before I start a policy, as opposed to finding out after I start it, which you look at the numbers and think, how does that happen? That happens quite a bit with whole life insurance, unfortunately. But as we progress on, IRR gets better and better. Before I went my tangent there. <laughs> there we go. Indexed feature looks good, but that's all assumptions based on the S&P 500 history. So, wow, before I look at the last piece, a lot of info, I know. Innovation and customer service. Guardian is five stars in this, in the innovation they are. Customer service, within the life insurance industry, they are rated among the top. Their customer service is fantastic compared to other companies. With that said, if you are watching this video specifically with interest in a whole life insurance policy designed for maximum cash value, that can be challenging for a customer service rep because always remember they are working at a life insurance company, which is first and foremost life insurance, cash value is second. We've had, with all companies, clients told you have a policy loan rate of 8% when they have a 6% rate. We've heard, hey, you know, there's no guarantee here or dividends are not going to be paid to the policy, just misinformation. And it's not never the customer service, service rep's fault. It's just they're new, they're given a manual kind of thrown into it. 
So why I add that is what our company does, what I like to do is always provide that additional layer of customer service. And we've got our own client relations department here. Our agents always strive to provide that additional service too, because that's important. It's people's money that's going into a policy here. Treat them how you want to be treated. So back to the beginning, actual performance, not just illustrated. Their illustrations are decent compared to other companies as far as what the projections look like. Big issue in the life insurance industry is often agents will sell the company that projects the best looking numbers on paper. And there's nothing wrong with it. I get it from a sales standpoint. Um, but at the end of the day, anytime we're gonna look at any company that I'm going to recommend and put our company's name on as far as a recommendation, we have to have the data with respect to actual performance. If we don't, that's why I don't recommend them. That's why I'm so big on the four major mutual companies. Actual performance, we've seen them deliver with this piece, if it's designed properly. If it's not designed properly, I've seen Guardian policies deliver very, very poor results, where they're not attractive at all. Like less than 2%, oh, not quite that bad, but for example, someone had reached out recently um, and he was upset, right, rightfully so. He had a policy from Guardian that was designed with a high, high base premium. He did not have a high allocation or, or actually no allocation toward PUAs. It had projected over a period of time an IRR of over 5% and it did just north of 2%. And that's the case with really any company out there. When you look at whole life insurance policies, the less you allocate toward PUAs, typically the greater the policy under delivers compared to that illustration. That's been the case forever. But with this here, when it's designed properly, we see policies issued perform quite nicely, 4% plus. There's actually one, it was issued in 1975, that delivered about a 7.1% internal rate of return. We're not gonna see that anymore. <laughs> it lived through the 80s, double digit dividend rates, but the 1990s and 2013, is greater than 4% from the 90s, but 4% plus, which is fantastic. Depending on the issue period, that's how I would set expectations today. I like that three to 5% rate, just because we are in, again, a very low interest rate environment, but Guardian being one of the major mutuals, always paying a dividend, being in business for over 160 years, it's year 161 actually, Definitely a solid, solid company if you are considering a whole life insurance policy designed for maximum cash value. No, this was a ton of information. I hope you enjoyed it. I really do. If you did, please hit that like button. Um, subscribe for more. Please reach out if you have any questions, would like to see any examples, connect over a call. And as always, I hope this helps. Thanks so much. See you later. Hey guys, Steve Parisi here. If you enjoyed the content you just saw, please subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for future videos. If you'd like more information or to see some custom policies for yourself, feel free to call or email our offices at the contact information below.